Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, I know it's been a while since I've been on. Uh, graduated college recently and uh, started a new job, so I've been working a lot of hours, so I haven't had a lot of time to do uh, YouTube videos. I mean, I have a few videos uh, lined up, but time to edit's kind of uh, kind of short, you know, working 50, 60 hours a week. So, uh, well, today, let's uh, get right to the point here. What I want to talk about today is... Uh, how different foods and vitamins can um, contribute to your anxiety, whether in a good or a bad way. Um, typically, like when you go to the doctor and physician and things, like you end up walking out with a prescription. Nine times out of ten, you're going to walk out with a prescription to, you know, I don't know, up your serotonin levels, you know, whatever it is. Whatever medication you're on obviously has a different um, set of things that it does to try to help you. Um, basically what I've been doing recently is doing a ton of research on different foods and vitamins and how it affects your system. I mean, everyone, you know, that's had panic disorder and done any research, like kind of knows that, you know, your body releases different chemicals and there are foods that can fight those. I mean, the chemicals release, you know, adrenaline, sodium lactate and cortisol. Those things can wreak extreme havoc on your body, which I've mentioned in previous videos. But how do we counteract them? I mean, that's that's a big, you know, a big question mark because, you know, like I said, when you go to your primary physician and you talk about having anxiety, you go to your, you know, psychotherapist, therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, they don't really give you the breakdown on what kind of foods and things that you can have or vitamins that you should be taking in order to, you know, combat this on, a, you know, on a different level. Well, first, I want to talk about, like, magnesium deficiency. See, it's not well known that magnesium is a huge contributor to panic and anxiety and depression. I mean, I have some things uh, written down here. Excuse me for reading off of this. I mean, it's a lot of information, but, I mean, a lot of really key points that I think that everyone should know. You know, magnesium deficiency can be a major contributor to elevated adrenaline levels, okay? That may come as a surprise to you, but, you know, adrenaline, obviously the things that like start, you know, your heart starts going really fast and you start sweating and, you know, you just have that over overwhelming feeling of like needing to get out of there. It's part of the fight or flight response and one of the three main chemicals that we talked about earlier. You know, increased levels of uh, urinary uh, catecholamine, catecholamine is actually the, I guess, proper way to say it is uh, can be found in your urine. So, I mean, if you have a simple pee test at the doctor, definitely pick a doctor that kind of specializes in anxiety disorders. It can show you that, like, this, you know, it can kind of give you an understanding of if you are, you know, magnesium deficient. I think that's, like, one of the easiest ways to try to find out is through a simple urine test. So, I mean, I would talk to uh, your uh, primary physician about maybe getting a urine test. Um, Magnesium deficiencies can be known to, you know, cause stress, anxiety, depression, even schizophrenia. And what I want to do is I want to tell you some of the foods that you should be eating on a daily basis. I mean, do a little research and see exactly how much you need in a day, you know, but some of the major uh, <clears throat> foods that actually have tons of magnesium in them that can counteract this is like oat bran, wheat bran, pumpkin seeds. Uh, chocolate, not necessarily a Nestle Quick Bar or a Nestle Crunch Bar. I wouldn't recommend that. Don't go grabbing Butterfingers and telling people that I told you that that's going to help. Um, it's more like raw cocoa beans or like some really, really high-end like refined chocolates and things. Um, uh, uh, almonds and seeds and nuts. Uh, spinach, huge. This, spinach can help you in a lot of ways. I mean, it's high in like folic acid you know, magnesium, it just does wonders for your mind, um, halibut, or really any kind of oily fish, like omega-3 fatty acids, like I, I take like a fish oil supplement, but I take the liquid, and it really, really helps, I'm, I'm just, write it down on your list of things that you should be eating, and uh, like white and black beans, those, those I would say are the top ones that really, really have a ton of magnesium in them, and that can, you know, counteract you know, a deficiency of some sort, and, you know, worse comes to worse, if you don't have a vitamin deficiency, you don't have insurance, you know, and you think you may, start eating some of these things, like incorporate them into your, into your diet, I mean, most of them are high in fiber, 
or have other vitamins and minerals in them that are just going to make you an overall healthier person. So, I mean, what do you really have to lose by trying a lot of these things? I think that either way, you're really going to benefit long term. Um, the next one I want to talk about is uh, tryptophan. What is tryptophan? It's one of the essential amino acids that you have in your body. I believe there's nine of them. And uh, if you're going to take tryptophan as a supplement, I don't necessarily recommend it because there's so many foods that you eat that you know isn't for the you know I mean people that are picky eaters are still going to love these things. But I also recommend taking a supplemental uh, B6 or a B complex because like B6 is needed in order for this to be absorbed and to work properly. Um, like a lack of uh, tryptophan has been uh, linked to depression, anxiety, irritability, impatience, impulsiveness, inability to concentrate, weight gain and weight loss, sometimes unexplained, and insomnia. Anybody with a stress, anxiety, depression, hypochondria, any of the above, you can relate to any of these things that I just listed here. I mean, one of the major benefits of tryptophan better sleep. You know when you get a better night's sleep, a restful sleep, your anxiety, depression, panic disorder, it's just, it's just slightly better. Or it can mean a hundred times better, who knows. But some of the best foods for this are like turkey. Turkey, huge. That's I eat turkey, you know, burgers and bacon and you know, obviously sandwiches, things like that. Uh, red meat, dairy products, nuts, seeds, legumes, soybeans, soy products, tuna, and shellfish. I mean, there are some things on there that, you know, some people may not like. I mean, obviously, like the seafood and stuff like that, but it can help you in leaps and bounds. Like some easy, easy, easy things to help you reduce your stress and anxiety. It's like, why wouldn't you try some of these things if you thought you could feel better? And I understand that some of this... You know, some of the things that I've mentioned, you know, it's like, oh, it's very expensive to eat healthy. But, I mean, how many times in your life have you said to yourself, I would pay a million dollars to feel better? So what's an extra $20 on top of the grocery bill just to try to incorporate some of these foods to start making yourself feel better? Um, another, there's plenty of other foods that, you know, I'll, I'll be talking about. Because, like I said, I'm going to make this into, like, a mini-series as I continue researching different, you know, foods and vitamins that will help. But, uh... A third one that I really wanted to talk about because it's it's just a common food that you know everybody probably likes for the most part, but like oranges. Oranges, obviously, you know vitamin C. Vitamin C is a big thing. Fights disease and fights the common cold. You know, just overall helps your immune system. But one of like we were talking about earlier, the three um, chemicals that get released in your body: the adrenaline, sodium lactate, and cortisol. Well. An excess of cortisol in your body can be very damaging. So the vitamin C, which is highly concentrated in oranges, will return your blood pressure levels and reduce the cortisol back to normal quicker to help you start feeling better faster. You know what I'm saying? Because like when you have cortisol in your system, the metabolites and things, it takes like a half hour for your body to start feeling better or actually like repairing itself. So oranges, another thing, it, it's also an immune system boost, which, you know, having panic disorder and anxiety, I mean, it, it wreaks havoc on your immune system. So I, I recommend, you know, if you can't incorporate, you know, oranges or, you know, another high vitamin C food into your diet, like daily, a couple times a day, I recommend getting a supplement, but get a good supplement. You know, you know, you can go to your you know, local grocery store, you know, CVS or something like that. But I don't typically recommend it. I mean, a lot of these vitamins are water-based. They, I don't know, I, I, I take raw food vitamins for, uh, for instance, here, like, like I take vitamin code. Like, this is fantastic. Like, I've never, I've never felt better in my life. I mean, it's whole, whole food vitamins. It's got probiotics and enzymes in it. And it's everything. Like this particular formula here is just strictly for men. It's got a couple of extra things in here for uh, just for men, but I mean they have them for women, things like that. Um, another good vitamin 
which I don't really have to take because I don't really deal with the depression side of things so much anymore. But uh, this is an old bottle of stuff that I used to take, and it's called Minchex. It's made by Standard Process. You'll have to go to your vitamin store in order to get something like this. But this stuff worked really, really well for me. Like I said, it's got some very like fatty, fatty um, animal portions or something in there. So uh, that it'll, it'll help you out a lot. Like I said, a lot of people don't realize that fats, you know, high fat actually does help cure depression. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you um, for those that are more worried about the magnesium deficiencies, um, I take this. It's a natural vitality. It's a, a natural calm. It's an anti-stress drink, but it actually has all your daily um, needs for magnesium. So I would recommend taking something like that, also something you would have to get at your health food store. I figure between those three things, I mean, in a month, I guess you'd spend about $70, which I mean, I guess can seem like a lot of money, but like I said, I'll go back to my previous point. You've mentioned probably 100, 200, maybe 1,000 times that you would pay a million dollars to feel better. So what's 70 bucks? I mean, if you really break that down, you know, it's a little over, what? $15 a week. I mean, you can spare that for yourself just to make yourself feel better and to, you know, get part of your life back in, in an easy way just by consuming things, you know, and I believe this is very important and I think it's going to help a lot of people because most people don't know these things. Like I didn't know these things when I, when I first started having panic, um, panic attacks and, you know, anxiety, like I never in a million years thought to myself, oh, well, it's, you know, mostly the food that I eat. Like the first thing you hear is like reduce caffeine, nicotine, you know, stay away from chocolate, you know, things like that. But I mean, nobody ever broke it down that says, hey, if you eat certain foods, it can increase your mood. It can help, you know, like the uh, like the, the tryptophan. You know, what I mean, that amino acid raises your serotonin levels, just like a lot of these medications that you're taking. So why why blow all the money on the medication? I mean, hey, you, you may or may not have insurance, but still, like, your co-pays, what, 20 bucks? Well, a pack of turkey, you know what I mean? You get some good stuff, Seven ninety nine at the store. I mean, I don't know. Do the math. I honestly think it's a, it's a good thing to start doing for yourself, not only for overall health, but like I said, I think it would help long-term as far as your anxiety and panic disorder. Um, I'm going to do some follow-up videos because there's some other, like, excellent foods to, uh, you know, help you battle your stress and anxiety. I mean, sweet potatoes. Why sweet potatoes? Think about it. It's a great complex carbohydrate. Your body, just when you have anxiety and things, you, you, you start to, like, crave carbs. And when you're eating a bag of potato chips, not only do you feel sick, you're not getting good carbohydrates. Like sweet potatoes give you good carbohydrates. They break them down in a slower race, which raises your energy level and actually prolongs the energy that these carbohydrates will give you instead of you being hungry every five seconds and then you're putting on five pounds because of stress and anxiety attacks. Uh, dried apricots are good. Almonds, pistachios, walnuts, uh, salmon, avocados, green vegetables, broccoli, kale, like dark leafy greens like in general they're, they're good cancer fighters too i mean i don't, I don't know if, if you if you got the hypochondriac thing going on but that actually help you know helps kind of put your mind at ease like so we're going to go over a lot more of these over the next couple of days i'm going to post a few more videos i mean i hope this one helped you um i know it was kind of quick but like i said i'm on a time schedule here and i just want to uh try to get some information out here so something else new that you can try and hopefully um you know helping your recovery so well until next time i appreciate you guys watching please feel free to subscribe uh like the video check out my facebook page it's power of self on facebook just search it and uh like i said we'll talk to you soon all right have a great day